In this chapter, we're going to learn about the dynamics of robot manipulators. Dynamics relates forces and torques to positions. So force and torque on the end effector or the joint relates to position of the end effector or the joint. The goal is to obtain equations of motion for an end degree of freedom robot. So this will result in in second order coupled differential equations. So since they're coupled, we'll have to relate them using matrices. Now in this equation, Q is the joint variable. We want to get all the dynamics equations into the form M of Q, Q double dot plus C of Q, Q dot times Q dot plus G of Q equals torque. M of Q is the inertial matrix C of Q, Q dot is the Coriolis matrix, and G of Q is the gravitational matrix. Now, the Coriolis matrix will only show up if the robot has more than one joint. So if it is just a motor driving a load, then you will only have the M and the G terms. But if you have any more than one joint on your robot, you will probably get a Coriolis term. If there is friction, then this it gets subtracted on the other side of the equation because it is an external force or torque. So the robot will have to work harder. You have the B Q dot minus mu dissipative term, where mu is Coulomb friction, also called stiction for motors, and B is the damping, which is kind of like friction, but it's proportional to velocity. And finally, if you or end effector is applying a force, then you have to add this to the required torque. And that is related using the Jacobian. We've covered this in a previous video. Now, if you took dynamics with me, then you will probably remember using the Lagrangian formulation to get equations of motion, as well as the motor specking equation. That is in a separate video. The Lagrangian formulation uses the Lagrange variable, which is that curly L, and it's a subtraction of energy. So kinetic minus potential energy, then you take some derivatives, and that results in equation for joint torque. Here, Q is the joint variable, so that would be theta or D, depending on if it's revolute or prismatic. I is the joint index, whichever joint it is, and tau is the torque. So here is the motor spec equation below for reference, where the motor torque is proportional to the inertial term, which is multiplied by acceleration, the friction, the dissipative term, and the positional torque, where I is the inertia of the center of mass in the world frame, and Q dot is the joint velocities also given in the world frame. These combine into the Lagrange equation. So you can get DDT del L del Q dot minus del L del Q plus B times Q dot plus mu equals torque. So the energy storage combines with the energy dissipation and you get total torque required. There are two methods to determine the coefficients that go into this equation. The first method is using energy and Lagrangian. This is pretty straightforward to do if your robot only has one joint. Sometimes you can use it for more than, than that, but if your robot has a lot of joints, you want to use the second method where you combine energy with the Jacobian and the Coriolis. So there will be special formulas on how to get those. And remember, if the robot has multiple joints, all the terms are matrices. Method one, it uses energy and the Lagrangian. So first find total energies, kinetic and potential, and then formulate the Lagrange equation, kinetic minus potential energies. So next you take the derivatives, del L del Q, so that's a derivative with respect to position, del L del Q dot, which is the derivative with respect to velocity. And then you take the time derivative of the velocity derivative. You do that for each joint, put them together and form the torque equations. So you will have one torque equation for every joint. 
Method two combines energy, the Jacobian, and the Coriolis. This has five steps. First, find the linear Jacobian for each joint. Then find the kinetic energy that gives the M matrix. Find the Coriolis terms. There's a formula for that, gets the C matrix. Potential energy gives the G matrix. And finally, put them all together to form equations of motion. So in more detail, find the linear Jacobian. This is the JV for each joint. It is ZI minus one cross with ON minus OI minus one for revolute joints, where Z is the axis of rotation and O is the origin. And then just ZI minus one for prismatic joints. Or in that case, Z would be the direction of motion. Next, find the kinetic energy and get the M matrix. So for each link, the M matrix comes out of this part of the kinetic energy formula. You can see here. So we learned before that for scalars, kinetic energy is proportional to 1 half mv squared or 1 half i omega squared. Well, in this case, q dot is a joint velocity. So that could be either v or omega, depending on if it is a prismatic joint or revolute joint. M is going to be everything else in that equation that's not the velocity and not the one half. So next, find the Coriolis terms. This is the trickiest part. So Cijk goes inside of the Coriolis matrix. So here are the capital C's. You can see the first subscript represents the row and the second subscript represents the column. And those entries are the summation of all of the CIJKs of a joint times the, that joint's velocity. So CIJK we get using this formula where I is the joint to multiply by inside the C matrix. J is the column for the C matrix and the joint to multiply by outside the C matrix. And K is the row for the C matrix. So all of these terms have the same I because they're all multiplied by the same Q dot. They're all multiplied by Q dot one. So the first element of that C I J K is one. Now these are all in the same column. So they all have the same J in the C I J K. So that is two because they're all in the second column. Now finally, these all have the same K because they're all in the same row. So the third subscript here is one because this is the first row. Later video will show an example of how to apply this. So in that case, it should come to, out to be a little bit more clear. But if you just follow the formula, you can find the entries for every element. And remember that for a fixed K, so for the same row, Cijk equals Cjik. So for that, here the C211 would be the same as C121. Fourth step is to find the potential energy and get the G matrix for each link by taking the position derivative of the potential energy. And finally, put all of those terms together in their matrices and form the equations of motion.